see ya. Good to see ya. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hey. Uh, today, hi. We're talking about 3DS games. This thing won't shut up. Yeah, you forget uh, Nintendo used to like to put background music to all their consoles. Oh, yeah, for Jesus. No uh, there was a thing. You know what? That's a new story I got to put in here. Uh, there was a... They uncovered eShop music uh, for the Switch. Really? And I did it's not in the see code that. and stuff. Apparently, that. the music was up on a YouTube channel two years ago. Huh. But it's the... Um, the... The, the 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 code they found oh, lately. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we got that to talk about. We're gonna talk about the best 3DS games you can get right now before they all go away. Google, go bye bye. Uh, we got some other things to talk about. Yes. Uh, but other things to talk about. We have more Microsoft and Sony stuff. Yay! Yay! Because that'll that'll never end. You'll never see the end of that. Uh, we have Microsoft actually actually talking about their plans for mobile which they said was the reason why they're buying activision blizzard but we we're on to you phil yes um 8 bit do add much needed support to its controllers uh we have some sonic stuff for you some old stuff and some new stuff mm -hmm. uh we have a new donkey kong game coming to the switch too <laughs> Oh. That I need to I need to hear about. That I need to I'm I'm uh, I'm skeptical of that. And one. lots more things to talk about. This yes. week's episode. The chat the would love to talk about my butthole. <laughs> so I got a colonoscopy yesterday and I tweeted about it. Uh things are fine. I'm pooping weird. Yeah. That's the end and they don't know exactly what the problem is. I mean, this family does you do come from a long line of like people with poop problems but here's the thing that really pisses me off about <laughs> our family is that i saw four doctors last week right? right until one finally was like we gotta go way up there right so four doctors every single one of them said do you have a family history of yeah. this 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 and this and i said no to all of them the only thing i said my brother got his gallbladder removed right a few years ago yes that's all i said then mm -hmm. i come forward with all this information to our parents and they're like yeah it happens all the time <laughs> I knew, I knew, uh, not to get too personal, mom. Be a lot like, of poop I know, no, we know she, we I, know about her I, issues, yes, yeah, but she, it's not diagnosed. No, she just says she has it. Our dad was like, "Oh yeah, what happened to you? Happened to me?" I was like, "All right, well, tell us that, yeah. so I can tell a doctor what happened." Yeah. Anyway, but now I'm concerned. Now I feel like I need to get a colonoscopy to make sure. Well, you got your gallbladder removed. Yeah, but that could also... Are you shitting blood? No. Then you're fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm I getting do. an MRI sometime next week or I something. Do. I do think I have a hemorrhoid that I need to get checked out. But other than that... That's what they thought yeah. I had. I had a lot of traffic going yeah. in and out last week, if you know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. A lot of people getting in yeah. there. No hemorrhoid. They didn't find a hemorrhoid, though. <laughs> Will has FOMO. <laughs> that's that's what you, that's what you want to call it. Yeah, that's a weird thing to get FOMO yeah. on. Bob had a lot of popularity around his hole last week. I feel like I need some of that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, I appreciate the concern. I don't like to talk about things unless I know what's going on, and I don't. Right. So I don't really yeah. know what 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 to tell you. I'm gonna be at PAX this weekend. Hope everything goes well. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not in any pain or anything. I know so like, I, that's that. That's what's so weird about it. Yeah, that's why I like. I, that's why I'm like thinking like you. This was like because you didn't talk about this last week. No, I I just I it was just ha it was it's one of those things where I was like ah it'll go away. Yeah, and then it didn't, and I was like well that was a problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say though, uh, I don't I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but uh, last uh, next week, uh. Me and a certain Australian were invited to the Mario premiere. Right. We just got word about it today. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not going to go. Right. Because of my hole. But also, like, they couldn't have told us earlier. Yeah, that's not something you can like just drop yeah. everything and go to. Especially I if it's not in this state. Yeah, I decided, because I, I got to still go to see doctors and shit. I decided I'd rather go to PAX mm -hmm. because that's already all planned out and there's a yeah. lot to do there than to go to the Mario. Premiere, right. You know, um, anyway, anyway, 
Thanks for the concern about my yeah. hole. I'll let you know more as it happens. Maybe not on the podcast. Yes. I don't want to make a whole big deal about my hole. You're not going to do your, the the typical YouTuber video like with a health update no. video. I, I got that's what mom's mom was like. I'm surprised you didn't do a health update. Why? So here's what's going on with my butt, guys. <laughs> <laughs> So as far as we know, it's it some inflammatory issue. It might be ulcers. Yeah. But they didn't go. They didn't get high up enough. That's why I'm right. getting an MRI. But we'll find out. We'll figure yeah. it out. It's not. It's, it is. It is what it is. Whatever. Uh, thank you to a couple of the supporters. J- uh, Juan Juan Decimo, thanks for the 17 months. Can we get a live action tweet of the week from Will today? Sure. Yeah. When it happens, <laughs> you'll get one. Sokujin, thanks for the prime. Uh, Jeffrey Sorensen, thanks for the 24 months. I picked up Animal Crossing New Horizons for the first time in a while on its third anniversary. I'll never forget how the game helped me get through the darkest weeks and months of 2020. I did forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> that game was a huge uh, COVID game. Yeah, that was like the COVID game yeah. of the year. It, it yeah. dropped right when COVID dropped. Yeah. Yeah. And did it win the game of the year from anyone? No. No, it did. <laughs> from who? What won that year then? I'm pretty sure it won. It probably won best family game. Yeah. It's like the throwaway. Wolf Den Dad in the chat says, glad you got to the bottom of your problem. That's a butt joke. That's a butt joke. The I remember watching a, a Vsauce video. And the whole video was like 15 minutes of him trying to figure out why we call it the bottom when it's technically in the middle of your body. It is the bottom when you sit. Right, when you sit, but like when you stand up, it's in the middle. That's a good point. That's a <laughs> good point. <laughs> and like he went on to like have his like, you know, you've seen Vsauce videos yes. before. Like he, he has his like philosophical theories about it, but like it just broke me within two minutes. <laughs> People Mover, thanks for the four months. Uh, Gold Thunder, thanks for the prime. RP, thanks for the 100 bits from yesterday. So that's everybody. Uh, Eric says they went right up into the wolf den. Yep. <laughs> uh Game Awards 2020 it was nominated for the game of the year, but it went to The Last of Us. Oh. Part two. Oh, Last of Us Part 2? Yeah. Oh, that was bullshit. Yeah. I remember that now. Because, that was because stupid. of course it did. Yeah. Last of Us Part 2 was a good game. It was but Animal Crossing. Good, but like All right, never mind. You know what? As like a best game though, Animal Crossing? Like, Animal Crossing was fantastic for the time and everything around it. But best game, though? I'm not it was, sure. It was up against The Last of Us Part Two, Animal Crossing, Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, and Hades. Oh, Hades. Hades. Hades, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Of all of those. Well, you know, it's the Game Awards, so they gotta give it to the most expensive game. Wolf Den Dad says, could have wiped you out. Okay. okay. Let's, let's, uh, let's move on to oh wait before we talk about 3ds games let's yes. keep burying the lead as much as possible okay let's talk about my butt this time so <laughs> two hops this time <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> the steam deck sale that's still happening yes uh if you didn't know the week, the there's the uh, hit the wrong button <laughs> i hit the wrong button god damn it the Steam Deck went on sale last week and it is still on sale yes. so i just wanted to tell you that it's still on sale uh it is 10%, 10% off, off each of the models. Yeah. Though. So, uh, the 64 gigabyte, 256 gigabyte, and the 512 gigabyte. Yeah. Usually it's $400, 530 and 650 Yeah. They are now $359, $476, and $584. So you can get like the 512 model for just a little bit, just like literally a little bit more than what the uh, 256 model normally normally goes for yeah. yeah uh that one's notable because the screen is different mm-hmm. i have never actually seen both side by side though yeah uh, jackson neither. i think has the most expensive one i haven't actually okay. looked at them side by side i tweeted about this and a lot of uh, things got really weird like in the comments people were like uh it became this weird console war thing okay because you know people saying the switch is better and whatever okay. or people saying the steam deck's better than the switch i don't know why it had to be like that um, I just thought it's very, it's ridiculous that a console that just came out a year ago and has, and has been successful mm-hmm. is on sale already. That's crazy. Well, okay. It's a 10% sale. 
So it's still, not, it's not a huge drop in price, and it's not like it's a permanent price reduction. Right. You know, the, these these prices are going to go back to normal soon-ish. Mm. That said, you know, a sale one year at, like after a year, that, it's a good thing. And you know, ten percent off isn't bad for a one year anniversary. But that's unheard of for consoles. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, it's especially in this day and age, it's not common. Now people were people were being like, "LOL, console like the Steam Deck's <laughs> not a console. It's a video game system. I mean, you could what are, what are it's video a game handheld systems? console. I mean, how is it not? See, here's this is like this is the thing with video games. Video games are what the are whatever the person playing them defines them as. Mm-hmm. Like, I downloaded Call of Duty on my phone the other day. That's a video game, but it's on the phone, and you don't play video games on your phone. You Call play, of Duty Mobile, yeah, it's actually pretty good. You play video games on, uh, you play video games on the TV, but I play it on the 3DS. Well, that's a handheld game. That's different from a console game. Mm-hmm. But I play them on the PC. Those are PC games. It's different. You know, this it's like the only medium. Well, not really, because like you can say like, oh, I saw a movie on TV. Oh, I saw it in theaters. It's different. You know, so, like it's you're still playing video games. Like, right. who gives a shit where you're playing them? See, like, so you brought up a good point about like PC. Mm-hmm. Like, I wouldn't consider a PC, even if it's a gaming PC, I would not consider that a console, right? Because it's a it's a gaming PC. You can do a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. It's the platform that you play the games on. The PC has multiple platforms. You got Steam, right. you got Epic, you got everything, you got yeah, a million yeah. different things. The Steam Deck has other things but it's really at the core if you're if your mom is going to target and picking up a steam deck mm-hmm. which i don't think you could do right no, now you can't do that. uh you bring it home you're buying games off of steam the right. platform of steam so right one pl- unified platform and it's steam mm-hmm. i'm calling that a console because it's yeah. a it's it's a video game system with one storefront right and then you can you can finagle all this stuff but for the yeah. most part that's how it is um so I think it's a fucking console. And then people were also memeing on me because I called it successful. They're like, LOL, a million units successful. Yeah. It, a million units in a year from a company that traditionally does not make systems, handheld console or yeah. otherwise, who the last time they tried to do something like this was a massive failure with Steam machines. Yeah. Like, if this is a success. It, it's a it's a moderate success, but it's still a success. If Steam thinks it's a success, then it's. I mean, they could they could obviously just make it up and be like, it's successful, yeah. yeah. But they didn't set out to sell a hundred million units yeah. like Nintendo did. They are the underdog here. They yeah. were like, if we hit you know a couple hundred thousand, we'll be yeah, happy good for us. Yeah, yeah. But they sold a shit ton, so yeah. good for them. Uh, so here is a fucking ten percent off sale. Yeah, on a fantastic console that is selling really good and will probably continue to have great support for a while. Yeah, it's been updated very, very frequently. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's also a Steam sale. I don't really uh, I, there's a million things on yeah, sale. Always, I don't want to go. There's through always it. Steam sales. There's always a million things available for the Steam sale. Hades, what should have won best game in 2020, is 50 percent off. Mm-hmm. Also, I bought Celeste; it was five dollars. Oh, so I yeah. bought Celeste. Uh, that's usually 20, I think. But yeah, there's a lot. You should go check that out. The other thing we need to talk about before we get into the actual news is uh, new Nintendo Switch Online games. Yes, uh, we have four games coming to the Nintendo Switch Online. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, not only are we getting Game Boy games, but they remember the SNES and NES. I know. I'm sho- Well, I'm a little shocked, but also then I remember why they don't do a lot of <laughs> Super Nintendo and NES games. Yeah. Uh, so first with the Game Boy, uh, we're getting Kirby's Dream Land 2 and Burger Time Deluxe, baby. Oh, baby. Burger Time looks good. It does. <laughs> I mean, Burger Time is good. I, I I don't know if I knew that there was a Game Boy version. I mean, I think it was. I mean, there had to have been a Game Boy version. The box it. art is kind of sick. Yeah. Um, burger Time. If you've never played it, it's a classic arcade game where you're a chef and you're trying to make burgers in a big tower, and you have to avoid all the condiments <laughs> chasing after you. It's a good time. It's fun. I love Burger Time. So I'm excited to give this a try. 
and then and then just just continuing to do support the Super Nintendo and NES yes consoles fantastically. Uh, well, on the SNES we're getting Side Pocket, Pool, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. on the NES we're getting Zevius. Now, I know you probably don't know jack shit about Zevius. No, I don't know anything. So I've been watching uh, YouTube. YouTube videos from Jeremy Parrish. He's a video game historian. Okay. He's like, right now, he's chronicling every game on the NES, the Master System, you know, just doing you know, God's work. Doing God's work, basically. And he frequently brings up Zevius whenever Why? he talks about, especially vertical shooters and like shmups, because Zevius is considered to be like the original. Not like the original, but like all of the, all the other like vertical shooters and like shmups descend from zevius okay it it did a lot right the first time that uh, others in the genre take from it's the rosetta it's the rosetta stone it's the Zack snyder if you will because it is the blueprint (laughs) oh god (laughs) oh good lord i was just looking it up now because i'm uh i've been looking at a bunch of shmups because i'm looking at arcade games that i could play on my arcade cabinet because the arcade cabinet is kind of vertical right and and shmups Kind of work really good for yeah, for, yeah. for vertical screens. Um, what do they call that when you take a like a switch and put it vertical? There's like a word for the for the orientation. It's like a really bizarre vertical word. orientation. <laughs> Chat, help me out. It's it's like you're playing it blank mode or something. Oh, I don't. Uh, anyway, uh, looking square like Tate Tate mode. Oh, yeah. thank, yes, I've thank heard you, of that. Bearskin. Uh. Zevius looks square. Like I mean, it looks like four by three, normal four by three. Yeah. So I was like, "What the hell?" And then calling it uh, uh, like the the blueprint that sounded weird to me. But there was an arcade version, so yeah, that makes per- and it's vertical, so that makes perfect sense. How? Okay, so it's not the first one, but it was a blueprint. It was like it did it. How do I put this? It's like how Doom wasn't the first first person shooter, but like every first person shooter takes its cues from Doom. Right. Yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Uh I will never play that game. <laughs> uh I might try Burger Time. Yeah. For like a hot minute. And then we're completely ignoring Kirby's. We are Dream like Land. Kirby. That's probably the big Yeah, deal, that's but... the that's the big one, but I mean, yeah, obviously it's the big one. It's Kirby. <laughs> Whatever, bro. Uh, okay. Thank you, Shawnee Trill, for the two months. Uh, let's talk about 3DS games. Yay! Yay! Uh, they're gonna be gone forever on the 27th? Uh, yes. So, the eShop is closing on the 27th. We are going to talk about a couple of games that we think you should buy or get your hands on in like, some way. Real quick. <laughs> yeah. Just... So that you can try them. Yeah. Uh, Metacritic, luckily, has has a, has a list right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the number one top-rated 3DS game is The Legend of Zelda. Zelda? Zelda. Ocarina of Time 3D. Okay. Which I bought. Yes. Because I was like, they're re-releasing Ocarina of Time. This is my opportunity to give this game another chance. Hell no. <laughs> Still did not like it. Yep. Same. Uh, so... I don't agree with this. It doesn't even change anything about the game. I'm sure there's like some little nuanced things that are different. Yeah. But it's a copy and paste. Of, yeah. It's, it's literally just a port. Yeah. So the graphics are nice. Yeah. I think there's more of those little hint stones, but then I allegedly. I, then I went and played uh the I did a full playthrough of the N sixty four version and those stones were still there. So yeah. I, I don't I don't maybe there was more in the three DS version. I don't know, but I don't think it's an essential purchase unless right. you're like a huge Zelda fan. Especially because like you can get that on Switch now, like the original version on Switch. <clears throat> right. Online. The number two is Fire Emblem Awakening. That's okay. got a 92 on Metacritic. That might actually be worth getting because I think people say that's like the quintessential Fire Emblem. Okay. Uh, I'm not a Fire Emblem guy, so I don't know. Yeah. Number three on the list is uh, the Legend of Zelda: Link Between Worlds, which now, is a ninety-one. I would say that was that would be a more essential purchase over Ocarina of Time. Because I agree. Link Link Between Worlds is specifically made for the three DS. Yeah, and, and this is this is a wacky, wild Zelda game. Yeah, it's like some weird hybrid between like a Link to the Past and like you know new modern shit. So mm-hmm. 
and like you know the, your abilities are built around the abilities of the 3ds so it's a more tailored experience to the system yeah you go back and forth between 2d and 3d yeah. and he like goes there's like all these cool yeah. puzzles and shit like this is a this is a, a unique experience that you can only get in this game so this yeah. i think even if you're not like the biggest zelda fan mm -hmm. i think this is still like a good one to 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 go for this is something you you're gonna want to hold on to yes um although I, I should also note these are games you can also just get physically yeah <laughs> but the used market for these games i'm are sure gonna be ridiculous yeah i'm sure it's gonna go up real soon yeah dk oldies 35 bucks for okay for, for maybe link, not link to the... maybe not but man. it's 20 dollars. <laughs> it's 20 dollars on the 3ds eShop. so still it's it's way cheaper on the 3ds eShop yeah. than you would get if you bought it physically yeah it's almost double if you get it physically so uh what else do we got we got shovel, shovel knight, knight which you can get anywhere yeah. don't get that that's 90 i the 3ds is not the best place to play that right i, I first played shovel knight on the 3ds i wish i bought it anywhere else <laughs> <laughs> i mean i had a great time on my 3ds because at the time that was a good place to play it. Yeah. Now you can play it on literally any platform, and any other platform is probably a better time to play Shovel Knight. Right. Uh, Mario 3D Land is is a good game. Yeah, it's a good game. I remember when that came out. That was like finally the first game for like people like actually want to go out and get a 3DS. For right. It was this game. Uh, it was also weird because everyone's like, yeah, like reviewing it. Everyone's like, yeah, the game is good, but it's not like really anything to write home about so far. And then after World Nine, everyone's like, this is the best Mario game ever. <laughs> So stick with it. <laughs> uh, Pushmo is on the list. That's just a puzzle game. Yes. I'm not uh, I'm very surprised familiar it's very with high. Pushmo. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. surprised it's high. Uh, that That is an eShop exclusive. So there is no physical for that. Yeah. So look up Pushmo. Yeah. Because you're only getting that as, as, a, as a, a, a digital. Next is Majora's Mask 3D. It's, it's the same again yeah, yeah you can play that on switch online you can get it elsewhere uh 3d gunstar heroes yeah, what is that buddy. it is gunstar heroes on sega genesis uh ported with uh the stereoscopic 3d effect okay so they basically added depth of field trickery to it so you can turn the 3d slider way up mm -hmm. and play the game in 3d gunstar heroes is available on other platforms still yes so uh, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's a second. The good thing about Sega is they'll put their games on literally anything. Yeah. So you can find Gunstar Heroes elsewhere. But Gunstar Heroes is good shit. As is the next game, Streets of Rage 2. You can 3D. Have, I'm pretty sure both of those are in the Sega Classics collection. They're in the I'm pretty yeah, they're both in the Genesis Classics collection that you can buy. I don't know if they're both on Switch Online, Genesis. I will look. But they're available on Switch. A lot of there. stuff that's in the Classics Collection is also on the Switch yeah. only. I wish this was easy to, to search. <laughs> uh, uh, Switch of Rage 2 is on Nintendo Switch Online. It says okay. Fatimus Prime. Uh, what well, about I'm pretty sure Gunstar Heroes is. Yeah, it is. Okay. It is. So there so, you go. There you go. Uh, but that's with the premium version. That's with, yeah. the, with the expansion pass. Mm -hmm. So you got to pay more for that. Uh, next on the list is Colors 3D. That, that, that's just a like a rudimentary drawing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Zero Escape, Virtue's Last, Last Reward. I don't know that one. Fire Emblem Fates. Uh, Pokemon Y. Uh, Fire Emblem Fates again. Uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf. That I there saw on the top of people's lists. Yeah. Um. If you really loved New Horizons and you want something else, yeah, try. Uh, people really loved New Leaf. Yeah, um, I wouldn't say it's worth it. I'd say New Horizons is probably more worth it. Just play that. Yeah. But if you are already sick of New Horizons and you want something else, New Leaf might be worth it. Just yeah, to, I think try handheld is like the like a good home for Animal Crossing because you can take it with you. You can work on your house and like your village on the go rather than having like set aside time like sit at a tv and mm -hmm. play with it and that's also only twenty dollars yeah so 
you're you'll get a better deal digital than you would getting it physical. Mm-hmm. Pokemon Sun and Moon. I I, didn't, I wasn't a big fan of these 3DS Pokemon games. Yeah. Uh, Fire Emblem Fates again. Jesus Christ! How many fucking Fire Emblem Fates <laughs> games are there? Sonic the Hedgehog two outrun. There's a lot of Genesis games that they turned into 3D. Well, because they, they were good. <laughs> Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. That was I actually played that. That was my because I have the Monster Hunter. Yeah, DS that came with it. Uh, I only got this because it was the special edition, and, yeah. I was, and it just came with Monster Hunter. So I was like, I guess I'll try Monster Hunter. Yeah, uh, and it was fun. I I, I liked Monster Hunter. Uh, the whole time I was playing it, I was like, Why in God's name in this in this day and age, why are the areas so small and the loading time so long? Like <laughs> like 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 you. You're in a small area and you move and then it loads the next area. I think the Monster Hunter is one of those games where like they'll put the ser- they'll put the next entry on the series, the next numbered entry on the most popular system in the world at the time, mm-hmm. which was the 3DS. And I think they just pushed too far. <laughs> so I think they thought that was their style. Yeah. Like that was a that was an artifact of the old Monster Hunter games, and they were like, we can't change it. It's the style of Monster And it's like, no, you're being lazy. And yeah. now with Monster Hunter World and Rise, it's just open areas. Yeah. Um, Crashmo, I guess, is another one like Pushmo. Uh-huh. Uh, that's eShop exclusive. SteamWorld Heist, I'm pretty sure you can get elsewhere. Um, I know the SteamWorld games were very popular, specifically on the 3DS. Uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Yes, the sequel. That is, uh, if you'd like Luigi's Mansion. You're not going to be able to get this anywhere else. Yeah, and again, it's going to be cheaper on on digital. Um, and that's all. Oh, Metroid: Samus Returns. I didn't love it. Yeah, I remember you saying you weren't a fan of it. Yeah. I haven't played it, so I can't. I mean, if you're a huge Metroid fan, it. then this is your last chance to get this game. Yeah, I think you might just be better off playing Metroid Two on Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah, honestly. the original Game Boy version. Yeah. And that's really it. There's other games like Mario Kart 7. Yeah. There's uh, Smash Bros. 3DS. But like these aren't games that I think that you're really going to wish that you had. Yeah. And other and aside from that, like there are games that like, you know, the better version is on another system. Yeah. Kid Icarus Uprising is the latest Kid Icarus game. So yeah. if you want to know anything about the Kid Icarus franchise, this is your last chance to get that. But yeah. again, we here at the Wolf then didn't love that game. <laughs> I'm going to say um, uh, Rhythm Heaven. Is that on the 3DS eShop? I don't know. Is that a 3DS Oh, Mega Mix. Rhythm yeah. Heaven Mega Mix. I'm going to say that. Because I'm pretty sure... Oh, no, these screenshots don't look like it. The original Rhythm Heaven, mm-hmm. you have to play sideways. You take yes. the whole you take the whole thing and you turn it sideways. Yeah, book mode. Book mode. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> interesting. Uh, that, I was going to say get that because you can't emulate that easily. Yeah. Because you have to turn the whole what? You know, like it, it. Yeah. I tried to emulate it, and it. You had to turn and your monitor sideways. I was do, using a stupid Android phone, and, uh, and and the 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 two DS screens. You got one here and one here, which yeah. is already weird. Then you have to turn them sideways, and then they're in the wrong orientation. It it it. Yeah. Did didn't work good. Uh, Mega Mix can be played regularly. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, that might be the better version then. <laughs> But that means it's easier to emulate, so maybe you don't need to get it. Um, box boy games; those you can also get elsewhere. I think yeah. one of them. One of them, I think you can only get on 3ds right now. That's it. That's all we're gonna talk about. Yeah. Uh, I got some. I, I wanted to bring up what I have in my emulation folder. <laughs> uh, we didn't bring up New Super Mario Bros. Two. Probably because that game's all right. Yeah. There's other ways there's to play better, 2D Mario games. Yeah, there's better new Super Mario Brothers games yeah. out there. Um, Kirby Planet Robobot is actually sick. Yeah. It's a great Kirby game. So that's that's yeah. worth it. Um, There's there's also a virtual console. There's a lot of handheld yes, stuff. Yes, that's important. Um, Game Boy, Game Boy Color stuff. Uh, There's ga- Sega Game Gear games. There's 16 Sega Game Gear games, which is nice that's insane yeah because like that you're not gonna get much yeah anywhere like, else no and it's like you know the game gear sonic games are very unique and different um the game gear shinobi is like a power rangers knockoff 
Oh, that's another one I wanted to bring up. Uh, there is a Shinobi game for the 3DS that is just uh, Shinobi 3, but like remade. Yeah. It is bad. Yeah. Uh, it was rated well, but... Was it? Because every Maybe Shinobi game... Every Shinobi game that has been released since the Genesis has not been rated well. Um... Maybe I'm making that up. Yeah. I think it's one of the top searches when you search 3DS games. It always comes up. It's really? a, it was a popular game. Yeah. Uh, I did not like it. Uh, I'd much rather just play the... Oh, it got a 69 on Metacritic. Never nice. mind. You yeah, know, it wasn't as good as just the regular yeah. ga- uh, uh, Genesis version. So, uh, on the, se- the Sega Game Gear games on, on 3DS, you get, uh, you get Sonic Blast, which is a shitty game uh you get sonic drift 2 which is a bad racing game you get sonic labyrinth which is probably the worst sonic game on game gear you get sonic the hedgehog 1 and 2 which are good you get sonic the hedgehog triple trouble but not sonic chaos the best of them. i was just looking up sonic chaos yeah i don't think it's available at all no no they skipped over that one for some reason why do they do this i have no idea that's so annoying I mean, I remember when the 3DS came out and Sega said, like, we're not going to support Genesis games on Virtual Console. But we'll put Game Gear games on Virtual Console. They didn't. They only put 16 games. That's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, yeah Virtual Console games. I mean, Nintendo's been pretty good at putting stuff over. We talked on a previous episode about how there's a lot of Pokemon games yeah. that are just going to disappear after this. So if you want original Pokemon games, this is your only chance to get them legitimately. Yeah. Um, also, speaking of Pokemon, Pokemon Bank, which we talked about, I think, last week. Yes. Uh, I did download it. It crashed my 3DS. Oh, wow. Like, it, like, it was a scary crash. Yeah. Is this a hacks 3DS? So that might have something to do with it. <laughs> but uh, it, it, like, all, it basically blue screen. Yeah. It was very scary. Uh, but it worked. You need to purchase like a transfer pass in order to even use pokemon bank really i didn't do that <laughs> because i have nothing to transfer and it's a subscription okay so i don't know how that's gonna work so i downloaded yeah. pokemon bank anyway because we're not sure what's gonna happen with the ability to download pokemon bank yeah. in the future uh and i guess i'll open it and see if the in-game purchase of the transfer pass will work after march 27th yeah um if you want to ever transfer any of your old Pokemon, you're going to need Pokemon Bank and the transfer pass. I have no mm-hmm. idea what's going to happen with that transfer pass in the future. Um, otherwise, I don't really have much else. On. I mean, I have all of the ambassador program. Oh, you know what? Fuck it, dude. I love Pilot Wings Resort. That didn't, oh, yeah, you that love didn't that get game. a good rating, but yeah. Pilot Wings Resort is sick. I mean, it really is just like a tech demo. Kind of, but but it's, but got it's a, a very good tech demo. And it has a lot of missions. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time playing that game. Uh, otherwise, I miss a lot. I got a lot of Ambassador Program games, but a lot of those weren't actually available. Yeah. Mighty Gunvolt Burst. That one was good. Or Mighty Gunvolt. Uh, yeah. So I guess that's it. I guess we went through enough. Uh, yeah. Th- the moral of the story is hack your 3DS. Yeah. It's very simple and easy to do, and you'll be able to get any game you want. I'm sure there are like 3DS fans out there who are like, oh, you forgot about this game or that game. But like, I don't know, like the 3DS, that was like a weird time when like we weren't into handheld, the handheld gaming scene, you know? No, I was. You were. <laughs> because I was uh, commuting for three uh, hours every fucking day. Yeah. So I got a 3DS. Um, and I started playing like the, po- I, I, I like went back, I went in waves and I started mm-hmm. playing, uh, the, the Pokemon games and I kind of fell off of those. I started playing Monster Hunter and I was kind of into it. I started playing, uh, I liked playing smash a lot. Um, and most of the time though, when I was commuting and I needed something to do, I played games on my phone. Yeah. I played freaking uh, uh, what's that puzzle game I like a lot. Monument Valley. Okay. Monument Valley was sick. And other things. Yeah. Uh, I mostly probably just scrolled Twitter. Yeah. But I, yeah, I gotta say, 3DS Library, it had some incredible games. It did have some good but games. But not on that many. Yeah. Yeah. It had yeah. a lot of crap. Yeah. <laughs> and the library isn't that big, I guess. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you, Sean Shawnee Trill, for the two months. Uh, Kate McCat is young, is doing Toma Da Chi. Oh, Toma Da Chi Life. Yeah. I've never played it. Me neither. But they ported that to the Switch. Did they? Uh, am, I, am I making that up? Oh, I'm thinking I, of Metopia. Yeah, I I was gonna say there was a similar game to it on Switch. All right, the Tomodachi Life, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Wait, I did play To. Did I? Did I play this? Uh, was this a free game? No, I think that was the game where like ni- like Nintendo didn't want you to have a gay relationship in it. In Tomodachi Life? Yeah. What the fuck? What did I play where, like, you would enter people's houses? Animal Crossing? No, you, it was your me. You'd, like, enter their house and, like, fuck around. Mitomo? That was the cell phone. Mitomo. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's different. That's different. Yeah. Uh, Mitomo was an offshoot of Tomodachi Life. Yes. Okay, so Tomodachi Life, then. I feel like a lot of the services that are required to play Tomodachi Life probably aren't going to work. Yeah. Uh, Eric says, that's called burglary. Yeah, okay. Found the cop in the, in the <laughs> chat. There's also a game that I have a ROM for. I'm about to do my best to say the name of it. Okay. Kolekizaidan Hojin Nihon Kanji Noryuku Kentei Kyo Kite. Oh, wait, there's more. Hold on. Konkin Training 2. Okay. <laughs> I got to sneeze. <laughs> it is a kanji. It's a kanji learning game, and you it shows you kanji, and you draw it on the 3DS. Okay. Uh, that will only be available in Japanese, and uh, you can, if, you, if you write out down everything I said, you can find the ROM pretty easily. Uh, here's one that I... That I should have brought up. I played it on Switch and on my phone, but it's on the 3DS. Uh, Mom hid my game. Oh, yeah. I love that game. That's on the 3DS? Yes. Is it the same game on all platforms? I believe so. I know on the 3DS platform, uh, the game is a DS. The game is a DS. The game that your mom hid is a DS. Oh, right, right, right. They change it in other... Yeah. Oh, okay. That's cool. Uh... We were saying that there's not a lot of DS games. The library is not like ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, especially like compared to the the original DS yeah. and like the Switch. You know, it just like it's a good system, but it I don't necessarily think it's a great system. You know? Yeah, I think again there were some there was like a handful of um, incredible games, but just yeah. not a lot and. I think the library might be small enough that you could, if you wanted to, you can just buy every game. Yeah. And somebody did. And somebody did. And yes. somebody did I just mean, that. Uh, I mean, it was man, expensive. Man buys every digital 3 The original game. article I saw, that was the art, that was the headline for it, so I just wrote that. Because it is funny. it's not just any man. I know. I'm going to bring this up. So I'm I'm going to see this man yes. this weekend, and I'm, I'm going to, I want to talk about this. Yes. So uh, Gerard, the completionist, bought every single Wii U and 3DS eShop yes. game before the shutdown at the cost of $23,000. I take it back. There are a lot of games. <laughs> when it, you put it that way. Uh, so let's skip ahead a little bit. So yeah, YouTuber Gerard, the completionist Khalil, has bought every single game on the 3DS and Wii U eShops, uh, totaling a grand... Uh, Twenty two thousand seven hundred ninety one dollars. This worked to worked out to about uh, nine thousand six hundred seventy three dollars for eight hundred and sixty six Wii U games and thirteen thousand one hundred eighteen dollars for one thousand five hundred and forty seven three DS games with collections measuring in at one point two terabytes and two hundred sixty seven gigabytes respectively. This massive haul includes DSiWare and virtual console games, as well Whoa. as DLC for dozens of titles. As Khalil noted, the entire ordeal took him 328 days to accomplish, requiring 
464 eShop cards and was funded by various sponsors. That is insane. Yes. I had no idea it took them a year. I was thinking like you have to sit there and purchase yeah. every single game. Yeah. And and uh, if you've ever tried to purchase a game on the 3DS, it sucks. It goes through like this little cute animation of it downloading the yeah. game, but it looks like it's going on dial up. So I know you didn't watch the video yet, but that was right. one of the things he brought up in it was like, you know, pretty much any digital storefront, you go in, you redeem your gift cards and you just download the game. Nintendo makes it very difficult. Right. Because you can't just add, you know, you can't just add your gift card to it. They they apparently lock you at $250 in your account. You can't oh add any God. more. Uh, you also can't just download everything. Like, cause it's like they said, it was, what was it? 267 gigabytes mm -hmm. of, for 3ds games. They make SD cards bigger than that. Yeah. You can't download them all into this on one SD card. Why? Because the, the 3DS, the screen, only allows for a certain amount of blocks uh, at a time. It, I will, I you know, to be fair, they'd have to load all of the blocks. And this thing, I don't, I mean, I have a lot of games on here. Yeah. I think, listen, I know Gerard's got a lot of games. Yeah. I don't got nowhere near that many games, but I think I have more a more than average amount of games, and it does take a long time to like load all of the stuff. See, some stuff just doesn't load in correctly. Right, it just skips over some. So, imagine having and I'm this and I'm many sure, games. Like you know, when Nintendo built the thing, they didn't anticipate somebody to download like thirteen thousand games. Yeah, onto and it. the freaking thing people when i hacked this thing yeah. everybody's talking about how you know it's one of the best handhelds you can get to play retro games and stuff and it is except for the fact that it takes fucking forever to boot the console up yeah so this thing's slow as hell so i kind of understand why uh not you can't load them all on but what did that mean did that mean he needed multiple 3ds's no he uh that was another problem he can only download it to one 3ds because it's not like your account can transfer uh, so like and the same thing with the wii u so he had to him or somebody else had to sit there and download one game at a time every system and then go back and do the dlc so what did what happened when he filled up the the card that he had to put in a new card oh so you can have multiple cards yeah oh, okay yeah so that may so when you put a new card in it loads all the tiles yeah and then you put a new card in it. Okay, yeah. that make that actually makes sense. That's not as bad as I thought. It was. I thought it's, that would have been a game ender right there. It's still pretty bad. Yeah, no, it's a terrible yeah. way to go about it. But. Uh, Khalil says that he'll now donate the collection of Nintendo Classics and uh, to the video game historian the, to the Video Game History Foundation, a nonprofit organization that preserves the history of video games. Nintendo announced last year that it would be sunsetting the 3DS and Wii U eShops, and while it will no longer be possible to buy games on that storefront. Um, from March 27th to May 23rd. Oh, sorry. And while it will no longer be possible to buy games on the storefront from March 23rd, uh, May 20th, uh, May 23rd is the cutoff date for using credit cards to add funds. The games previously acquired through the storefronts can still be downloaded. While a vast majority of 3DS and Wii U games are available physically, both systems are also home to a number of digital exclusives that will be lost at the end of March. That list includes Dr. Luigi, Pokemon Rubble U, and more on the Wii U. While 3DS has a much larger library of 3D enhanced classics and digital only titles uh, set to vanish in a few days, ahead of the stores shutting down, Pokemon games from the D Game Boy and Game, Game Boy Color era have uh, been big sellers on 3DS. If you're looking for a few games to grab before those shops close, check out the 3DS and Wii U games you should buy. So yeah, Kelsey uh, Lewin of the Video Game History Foundation yes. also tweeted about it and, and said this is a huge deal yeah. for, for, for video game history. And then she also said, eShop games have been combed through already. And she says, by let's call it underground preservation. Yes. From here on out, which is amazing, in a world where the two options for preservation are, as Gerard demonstrates, spending $23,000 or piracy it's pretty clear what's the more attractive option. Yeah. So do we know what the Video Game History Foundation plans on doing with this thing? Uh, I don't know the specifics of it. I know, I mean, I don't know if they can, ha like, 
I think they'll have it on like on display or like in their storage. Yeah. Just to have, because it's not like there's an easy way to, like to, for people to come in and like play the games. Maybe they'll take it on take it on the road and stuff, bring it right. to the conventions and stuff. Because right now the Video Game History Foundation, like they're they're basically just a library. Yeah. Of like everything, and unlike an actual library, like you can't go and like take stuff out. That's one of the like one of her tweet threads. She was talking about how you know like you can just go to a library and take out a book or take out a movie and like you know because of the company the video game companies and our best friends at the esa they don't want you to do that yeah you know and that's something that you know the video game history foundation and other charities are like fighting against yeah and it's video game history you know it's history it it needs we need a a a log of all that stuff that has happened yeah and it's very interesting to people like us and it it literally gets lost to time and it's very easily and it's unfortunate because you know the way video games have worked since its inception is always like forget the old thing move on to the next thing and you know that that's not how art works Mm -hmm. you know art needs to be preserved and remembered and experienced by people in order to understand like why it's important in the first place. Yeah. Twenty three thousand dollars is insane. Yeah. To to give to a company that that is being so nefarious. Yeah. Twenty three thousand dollars is a lot to give to a company that made it very difficult to give them that money. Yeah. <laughs> it should have been, hey, video game history foundation, here's a collection of games. Yeah. For your logs. It depends on what the Video Game History Foundation wants to do with it. It seems like they just want to preserve it. Yeah, they want to preserve it. They want to have the library. I mean, I'm, ultimately, they want people to have access to this stuff. Yeah. And I honestly... What is the most fair way to give people access to an IP? Yeah. You know? That's what well, needs to be figured out. It's the same... I would imagine it's no different than giving people access to, you know, movies and books and, like... Like what a li- like actually what a library does. Well, without this, uh, without this effort of archiving, yeah, uh, we would be like, oh, I wonder what was that one box boy game that was out yeah. or something. And you'd be like, oh, which one was the one? There were three of them, but I forgot that. You'd literally have to go into the eShop. Yeah. You'd be able to pull this out and pull up the game and stuff. You know, mm-hmm. uh, there's what did it say 1500 uh 3ds games including yeah. the virtual console stuff yeah you know how many switch games there are i'd imagine it's more than that there's sixteen thousand. Right yeah now. uh but still that is still a fuck ton of games yeah that needed some sort of preserving mm-hmm. maybe they'll dump the roms there's been a lot of like rom dumps on archive.org yeah which i think is great but is definitely a, a, a it's legal a, it's a gray world. era area yeah, yeah for sure yeah i don't know how how that works I but i'm glad it's it's going to good use yeah another thing i wanted to bring up was so your article was um GameSpot. yeah that said youtuber the completionist yes. okay youtuber the completionist that's how it should be right I saw Go Nintendo. Uh-huh. I was about to make a big stink about this. Okay. I'll do it here though. Okay. Uh, they said Fan spends nearly twenty three thousand dollars buying every Wii U and 3DS eShop title, and then Gerard quote tweeted it and said, "I appreciate everyone sticking up for me for Go Nintendo calling me a fan, but it's okay. I make videos. I'm a TV show host. I now make video games." None of that would have happened if I didn't start as a fan. As yeah. long as the intent and message of video game preservation spreads, I'm happy. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it's not wrong. He is a fan. I know. But he he is also a little bit more than a fan. <laughs> that That's not what infuriated me. Okay. Go Nintendo responded and said, hey, just want to chime in on this. They responded, like, way later. Mm-hmm. At almost four in the morning. Uh... I use fan only for simplicity's sake for those who don't know who you are. Wow. Didn't mean any shade at all. Introspect in, in retrospect, YouTuber might've been better. Long story short. Very sorry if this upset you in any way. Never meant for that. Uh, they apologized that, that is brings you to the root of the problem. Cause like, this has happened to me where I've had articles written about me and they always call you something. Yeah. It's never just Bob. It's hacker. Yeah, it's something. Hacker, 
fucking uh, hacker. What have I gotten? I've gotten YouTuber, hacker, modder, notable retro gamer was my favorite because it sounds really cool. Yeah. And then I used that to try to apply for Twitter uh, verification. And they said, you're not notable. <laughs> um, what else? The The wackiest one was coder. Because that I have never, ever yeah. been and doesn't. I don't know where that came from. Yeah. Uh, but they do that. Because they want you to click the article to see who it, it actually is. Yeah. You know? And also, like they said, for t- t- to shove as much as you can into, into the title. But there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with being like, YouTuber, this guy. Because I think the completionist is big enough where him being a part of it is part of the interest. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that... That really... I also, like, I was thinking, and I want to try to do this. How many people, fo- how many of the people that follow Go Nintendo also follow the Completionist? Because mm. I feel like there's a lot of there's overlap. A, a big I feel overlap. like if you're following Go Nintendo, yeah. you are following the Completionist. Yeah. So that sounds like a whole load of bullshit mm-hmm. to me. But that's just I I, I is my a little bugaboo of mine when people yeah. would when people call you YouTuber and it's like this big fucking YouTuber, yeah. you know. Anyway, um, I never heard of or followed Gerard until I saw him on G4. It says Meta Ascension. Oh, fair. He is uh one of the one of the what you, the forefathers of YouTube. How would you how would you put it? I don't know about forefathers. I would say he's one of the he's one of like the top uh video game. SAS. One of the OGs is yes. what I would say. Yeah. He's one of the one OGs. Of, one of the classics. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, without him, there wouldn't be a lot of other YouTubers. Yes. Uh, anyway. They admitted they don't want money they, when they shut it down, so there's no harm in just putting up all the games for free. You're talking about Nintendo admitted they so. don't want money? Yeah. When would they have done that? That sounds bizarre for them to admit. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, if you're shutting this the if you're shutting the eShop down, you're basically saying like we don't want your money for this stuff anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd imagine some of these games will be reused and put elsewhere or something. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh moving on. What else? Oh, oh, great the Microsoft shit. Oh, awesome. Here we go. <laughs> uh, Microsoft's new Xbox Mobile Gaming Store may launch in 2024. Microsoft is getting ready to launch its Xbox mobile gaming store as soon as next year. The software giant reveals it p- revealed its plans for an Xbox mobile store last year. And now Xbox chief Phil Spencer says that the company is building the store in anticipation of companies like Apple and Google being forced to open up their mobile app stores. We want to be in a position to offer Xbox and content from both us and our third party partners across me- at any screen where somebody would want to play, said Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer in an interview with the Financial Times. Today we can't today we can't do that on mobile devices, but we want to build towards a world that we think will be coming uh, where those devices are opened up. Microsoft first hinted at a next generation store early last year, just a month after the company announced its proposed Aqu- Activision Blizzard acquisition. The Xbox mobile store is designed to rival Apple and Google's mobile gaming store dominance. And while and will rely on content from Activision Blizzard like Call of Duty Mobile and Candy Crush Saga, two hugely popular mobile games published by Activision and King, respectively. While Microsoft is building an Xbox mobile store, it will need regulators to take action against Apple and Google to ensure a store can thrive on Android and iOS devices. Apple doesn't allow alternative stores on its iPhone and iPad devices, and even rival payment methods aren't available in most countries. Companies like Microsoft and Spotify are hoping the EU's Digital Ma- uh, Markets Act will force Apple and Google to change how they distribute apps on mobile devices and ultimately open up their platforms and stores to competition. The Digital Markets Act is coming. Those are the kind of things that we are planning for, said Spencer. Uh, I think it's a huge opportunity. Microsoft has a small presence in mobile gaming right now, 
And the Xbox maker admitted that in filing with the UK's Competition and Market Authority last year, that Microsoft currently has no meaningful presence in the mobile gaming and that and the Activision Blizzard transaction will bring much needed experience, uh, expertise in mobile gaming development, marketing, and advertising. It's interesting that this is all contingent on the Digital Marketers Act mm -hmm. because that could just not happen. Yes. <laughs> um, but I guess they're a big company and they could account for different scenarios. Yeah, and I'm sense. sure I'm sure they have a plan B if it doesn't go through. They need to make a fucking handheld. Uh, well, uh, Microsoft is also building a broader Xbox mobile platform. Microsoft was quick to support Xbox Cloud Gaming on Valve's Steam Deck. Kind of. <laughs> and also partnered with Logitech and Razer for their cloud gaming focused handhelds. They partnered yep. with Razer? I guess. The upcoming Xbox mobile store would also allow developers to run their own app stores within Microsoft's Xbox mobile platform. For any of this to become a reality, Microsoft is still relying on regulatory approval of its proposed Activision Blizzard acquisition. Microsoft has been sparring with the CMA recently, highlighting clear errors in the regulator's financial math. Microsoft is also facing regulatory scrutiny from the European Commission and the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. While the EU reportedly is likely to approve Microsoft's deal, the FTC sued to block it last year, and the case is still at the document discovery stage with evidentiary hearings scheduled for August 2nd. The FTC lawyers recently requested documents on Microsoft's next-generation gaming ecosystem, which may refer to the company's plans to build an Xbox mobile gaming store. Uh, the Razor's Edge is the one yes, we're referring to. that's the one that I made a video on. Yes. Um, I guess it came with Game Pass. I didn't realize that. It came with like NVIDIA stuff too. Right. But they didn't really push it as hard as they did the G Cloud. The Logitech yeah. G Cloud, Phil Spencer was using it. He was giving it to partners. He, yeah. he was found, they, they made a, a a pretty big social push for it. Um, They were pretty heavily tied with the G Cloud. Yeah. Uh, but like what people keep bringing up is that the, the problem with the G Cloud and also kind of the Razor Edge is that they're so expensive because, uh, especially Logitech, they have no, like store, like like there's no way for them to get money back after you bought the G Cloud. Yeah. If Xbox made their own handheld console, they would make money off of Game Pass subscriptions and game sales. Yeah. So, that's how consoles make money. That's how platforms make money. Yeah. So. They can't keep relying on, or I guess they're not. Re it seems like they're relying on companies like Logitech or Razer to put their platform onto their stuff. Yeah. But it would be much easier for everybody if Microsoft just made their own thing. I don't know if they would want to, though, because they're already like, you know, in the hole for how much money with the Xbox Series consoles as it is. Yeah. I think, you know, those cost substantially more to make than they sell them for you know i don't think microsoft really wants to spend money on a platform spend money on a system that really isn't going to make up any money back because all the profit on the xbox series systems is from games right. and if you're making a handheld device that's a dedic dedicated for streaming platforms you're not really going to make any money you're you're gonna make two, you're gonna make two profits. One from the system itself, which would probably be sold at a loss, so there's no profit, and then one from Game Pass subscriptions. But that's like, you know, a one-time purchase or like a one-time purchase every month. Yeah, like that's not really gonna keep the system alive. Well, the hope is that you hook people on that subscription. Yeah, but like like people like us are already hooked on. Well, you don't have it. I don't have, it. but I have it, and yeah. I'm, I'm and I, I know I know people, other people who have it. And they're yeah. hooked on it. Yeah, yeah, and we're hooked on it already. Yeah, but uh if there's a lull in games people might cancel also you get other people interested when you enter a new market like this yeah. or, or, or or a tangential market like this mm -hmm. so that's the hope is that you get other people interested by doing something yeah. weird and wacky like that and then that would also like people using the service more is just good yeah. for the whole service because it gets other people interested. hey what are you playing over there you know yeah uh so yeah, any any way to make that easier the better. I think it's a little lazy to 
have your uh, storefront and platform on other people's devices. I don't think that's lazy necessarily. I just think that's another way of going about it because it, it's a different kind of work you have to put in. Mm -hmm. You now have to like build relationships with all these other companies. Like you have to build relationships with Razer and Logitech and you know whoever else makes these devices. Well, to try and, you know, make the platform work as best as possible on these devices. Microsoft's in a unique position where they already have relationships with companies like Logitech and Razer because yeah. they're fucking Windows. Yeah. Um. I, the reason I'm calling it lazy is because Microsoft has everything and they have all of the resources to just do it themselves. Right. And and they, they could very easily. Well, do I that. think we saw, you know, when Phil Spencer talked about the cancellation of the Xbox, you know, streaming only set top box, the way they like built it, it was, it would have been priced too expensive to be sold at a, you know, at a retail. It would have been, it would have been too close to a um, Series S price. Right. And for something like that, they would want to get it down to like $120 yeah. maximum. So right. I think I think that is a concern trying to figure out how do you – because if they're going to sell a, a dedicated stream, handheld streaming device, then it's probably going to be like the price of a Series S. And at that point, why not just buy a Series S? So I think everybody who got a Logitech G Cloud saw the value in it. Yeah. The problem was that it was $350. Yeah. And there was no reason for it to be $350. Um, so I think Microsoft could sell something like that easily for like $200. Because they could take the loss. And also... You don't need a lot of technology in a handheld if it like like the G Cloud is not that powerful. Right. You don't need a lot of tech in there to make it just a streaming device. But I think two things. I think for them to sell three different systems at a loss mm -hmm. at the same time would probably be too great for even Microsoft to take on. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, Microsoft as a company, as a whole company, could probably do it just fine. But the Xbox division itself, that might be too much for the Xbox division to lose at once. And while Microsoft, the company, will be fine, they could shut down the Xbox division or revamp it completely if selling three systems at a launch at the same time does not go well. Mm -hmm. At the same time, another problem I could see happening is if, if Microsoft themselves make an xbox branded handheld people are going to assume that it's not just going to be for streaming that it's going to be able to download and play games natively on the handheld mm -hmm. like traditional video game handhelds can do and i and i don't know i mean that means you're going to have to take a, at least something as powerful as a series s and now you have to put a screen in it now you have to put a, a controller into it now you got to put a battery into it you have to start adding all these things and now you're going to price yourself up with a series s 300 dollars. yeah now you're looking at 350 400 for something is for a series s essentially i think that uh people will eventually see the value in cloud stuff yeah uh and i think that i don't know if they would ever do this but I think there's nothing wrong with having a console as powerful as a G Cloud or a Razer Edge mm -hmm. and allowing for some native games on games that are not crazy system hogs, yeah. like resource hogs, like uh, Dead Cells is available on Android. You could play it on your phone. Like games like that should be able to run natively on a handheld like, yeah. like, like this. And there's a lot of games on Game Pass that, like the messenger and like yeah. friggin' you know uh, uh cyber shadow and games like that uh celeste like those types of games should run natively right uh but i understand that games like friggin' forza aren't gonna run natively and those yeah. will be streaming only and i think that that's how it would be marketed that this thing is a primarily streaming device but i think they're the what this article is talking about like launching their own dedicated storefront mm -hmm. for games i think that is what would ultimately be like a good thing in general because right now, like you can't get Game Pass on iOS because of Apple's weird uh, rules about game streaming platforms. You know, I've talked about Netflix gaming on here before. To get a Netflix game, you have to go into the Netflix app, find the game. It takes you to the App Store, 
and you download the game as a separate app on your phone. Yeah. It would have been so much easier if you just go into Netflix and play the game from Netflix, but yeah. you can't because of Apple's rules. So Microsoft launching their own store is probably you know, a best case scenario because then you can go there and look for exactly what you're looking for and stream it in that mm -hmm. in the storefront. Yeah. The article said that uh, they supported uh, Game Pass on Steam Deck. Yeah. Um, they kind of did. Kind of. Because you have to jump through a lot of hoops to get it installed on a Steam Deck. Yeah. And they uh, have their own guide on how to do it, which I think is very interesting for a uh -huh. big company like Microsoft to give you a guide where you have to yeah. open the fucking terminal and do terminal commands. Uh, when they could just release an app for Linux. Yeah. Like, I don't know why they don't just do that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's good that Microsoft supports all these other platforms. I think, uh, they should look into a fucking hardware. I don't care how much <laughs> money it costs them. The, and I mean, the series S still sells a lot, but, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we keep hearing about how developers aren't happy with it. Why yeah. not replace it? <laughs> Uh, Ion's Growl says uh, you can do Game Pass on iOS. It's just not very intuitive. Yeah, well, it's all yeah, through that, the browser, and that's the same way it is on yeah, Steam Deck. I mean, that, that's kind of the point. I mean, I know people would much rather just go to an app, like a, a big green Game Pass button on their phone, hit that, and then having to go to Safari, type in GamePass.Xbox.com or whatever it is, log in there. Yeah. You know, it... Like, it not being intuitive is the problem. I will say, I've been playing Destiny 2 yeah. on uh, the PlayStation 5 through remote play on my laptop. Oh. In bed. I've been sitting in bed with my freaking mm -hmm. controller, and it's fucking awesome. Do you do that so you can hear Lance Reddick talk to you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's great. All right. I, I watched his Eric Andre episode. I saw parts of that. Yeah, I, was, like, I never watched that. I mean, I should. That was fucking hysterical. <laughs> Uh, well, that it's that show is I can't do that type of humor no. where it's just you know, uh, it's just like it's awkward, but it's like too awkward. Yeah, it's yeah. awkward and like the, the the funny part is that somebody's not in on it, and yeah. I don't, I can't do that. Yeah. But Lance Reddick was clearly like he in, was on, in it. on it. Yeah, yeah. and so it was it's different. Yeah. Um, but that's the first thing I when I think of him I think of Destiny two and and John Wick yeah yeah even in John Wick I was like hey it's Vala yeah you know uh but yeah I got back into Destiny yeah. uh and playing it on my fucking laptop my MacBook <laughs> with a PS five controller is insane yeah. it's freaking awesome I explained to my boss how remote play worked because I talked about this before my boss is really into the last uh, the Last of Us I he wanted to play not on the PS five because his kids sometimes use that room so I'm explaining to him how remote play works he's like. You could do this. I could do it on my MacBook. I'm like, yeah, you hook up your PS5 controller. Like, I could do that. I'm like, yeah. yeah, man, it's freaking awesome. Yeah, you, uh, he wanted to know if there's an app for the TV. No, like, I'm like, I'm like, if it's an Android TV, you might be able to get the Android app for it. But like, you just use your MacBook, man. Come on, don't yeah. make this complicated. Yeah. Plug your MacBook into yeah. the TV or your PS5. Plug the <laughs> PS5 into the TV. <laughs> Jesus. I actually, to show, I turned my PS4 on, downloaded a remote play on my, this is all before I had to go to work. And I had to get kids ready, <laughs> I had to get dressed. I like downloaded, I turned my PS4 on, got remote play, started on my phone, and like played with it on my phone, uh, went to work, got on the company Wi-Fi, turned on my phone again, made sure it was working, go over to him, like, this is my PS4 on my phone right now. <laughs> like, did you do that? Uh, Holy Lettuce says, you can remote play PS5 on the Vita. I did think you about that. You can do that. Because I'm I, not telling my boss to buy a PlayStation Vita. I used to do that with the first Destiny. Yeah. I would remote play. That's why I got the Vita, I think. Yeah. I wrote, no, I got the Vita because I thought cross save and cross buy. I thought that was sick. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I used that to remote play Destiny on my PS4. Mm -hmm. Um so I did think about that, but uh, I also heard that it works pretty good on the Logitech G Cloud. Hmm. But you need you need third party yeah. services with it. Um, so I was thinking about doing that, but it actually is great on my on my laptop. Anyway, uh, 
more Microsoft stuff. Wait, first we got Dark Tag with 100 bits. I'm going to miss 3DS. So I'm going to tell you five games that you must buy before it goes away forever. Kirby Planet Robobot. True. Mario and Luigi Dream Team. What? I thought... Isn't that a port? No. Okay. Pokemon Ultra Sun. Stretch Mo. And Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Okay. We hit some of those. There you go. Buy those before I'm it's look too late. Mario and Luigi Dream Team. I'm pretty sure that's not a port. I thought they were all remakes no. or ports of of DS or, or, or Game Boy Advance games. I don't think so. It says Nintendo 3DS. Okay. It is the fourth installment in the Mario and Luigi series. Yeah. Uh, Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions and Bowser's Inside Story plus Bowser Jr.'s Journey. Those are the remakes. On okay. 3DS. So this is the last Mario and Luigi game then? No, Paper Jam is the ma- last Mario and Luigi game. Because Mario and Luigi Paper Jam is the crossover with Paper Mario. Uh, Alright, where's the franchise? I need to see the whole list of the franchise. It's Superstar Saga, Partners in Time, Superstar Saga on the GBA, Partners in Time on the DS, Bowser's Inside Story on the DS, Dream Team, and Paper Jam on the 3DS, and then the Superstar Saga and Bowser's Inside Story remakes on 3DS. Okay. Okay, so Paper Jam was the last real one. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, were the Fire Emblem games on the list? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Let's talk about my, more Microsoft yes. uh, uh, lawsuit bullshit. Microsoft to Sony. Do it yourself. <laughs> Microsoft said it believes 10 years is long enough for Sony to develop a rival offering to Call of Duty. Regulators, including the UK's CMA, have expressed concerns about Microsoft's $69 billion nice acquisition of Activision Blizzard could significantly reduce PlayStation's ability to compete given that it would see Microsoft gain ownership of Call of Duty, which Sony has called irreplaceable. In a bid to gain approval for the deal, Microsoft has told regulators it is willing to make each new Call of Duty game available on PlayStation the same day it comes to Xbox for a 10-year period with full content and feature parity. In a newly published document, the company told the CMA that it believes a decade is long enough for Sony to create alternatives to Call of Duty. At the remedies hearing, the CMA asked Microsoft if the 10-year duration is sufficient and whether it w- there would be a cliff edge for Sony at the end of this period. The 10-year period is redacted, Microsoft <laughs> wrote. Uh, Microsoft considers that a 10-year period that a period of 10 years is sufficient for Sony as a leading publisher and console platform to develop alternatives to Call of Duty. The 10-year uh, the 10-year term will extend into the next console generation redacted. Moreover, the pr- the practical effect of the remedy will go beyond the 10-year period since games downloaded uh, in the final year of the remedy can continue to be played for the lifetime of that console and beyond with backwards compatibility. In its dealings with regulators, Sony has argued that it would be impossible to replace Call of Duty if the series was no longer available on PlayStation. In response to questions submitted by Brazil's Administrative Council for Economic Defense, which subsequently approved the deal, Sony called Call of Duty an an essential game, a blockbuster, a AAA-type game that has no rival. It wrote, according to a 2019 study, the importance of Call of Duty to entertainment in general is indescribable. The brand was the only video game IP to break into the top 10 of all entertainment brands amongst fans joining powerhouses like Star Wars, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, and The Lord of the Rings. Call of Duty is so popular that that it influences users' choice of console, and its community of loyal users is entrenched enough that even if a competitor had the budget to develop a similar product, it would not be able to rival it. How how is Call of Duty the only video game ip to break the top 10 of all entertainment brands how is that possible when pokemon is the number one i feel like what is it because they must mean because call of duty is only a video game yeah i think so and pokemon has a lot of other stuff going yeah on. i think so uh, Microsoft newly published response to the CMA and noted that the 10 year term is longer than or equal to the previous licensing remedies imposed in other mergers. While Microsoft is prepared to continue to discuss the constructive, uh, discuss this constructively with the CMA, 
There is no basis for extending the remedy beyond the period proposed by Microsoft. Um, CMA's final ruling on the deal is April 26th. That's a long time. Yeah. Uh, Brutal Beast in the chat says, by this logic, couldn't Microsoft also make their own first-person shooter franchise? Yeah. That's a pretty good point. I, I've, I've seen a lot of people... Um, when talking about this, like Sony's concerned about losing Call of Duty, that their response is, make your own. You, you, yeah. You're you one of the biggest studios on the planet. You're the leading first-party studio outside of Nintendo. You have the money. You have the resources. Make your own. Yeah. Just, just make your own. Just <laughs> do it yourself. Because it's well, so easy. Well, Sony could also just buy Call of Duty. They could. But they're, they can't. But they're... Well, Sony as a company is not as cash rich as Microsoft yes. as a company. Yes. Like Phil Spencer did not just go out with a credit card and buy act try to buy Activision Blizzard. He had to go to the uh, Satya Nadella, the head of Microsoft in all of it, and said, Can I do this? Please, Dad. Yeah. And yeah. Dad said, All right, here's a credit card. So yeah. Yeah. like it it's not like it's not that easy. It's it, we've seen this. Time and again, how many times has EA said, oh, Battlefield, this is the Call of Duty killer. And every time it's like, this th- this dog only has three legs. Call of Duty literally is just a brand name. I mean, it was a, ve- it, it was a very good game. It was a great game. Uh, it was it was the quintessential shooter. It, it, it paved the way for a lot of other shooters. Uh, it had the most polished and best mechanics of all shooters yes. at the time. And they've taken that and they've copied and pasted it a million times. And you know how when you take a photocopy of something and you photocopy it over and over yeah, again, it eventually gets worse, it gets worse, shittier. Yeah. They're, they've done that. I know. Like, but if if anyone can just copy Call of Duty, then everyone would just be copying Call of Duty. Yeah. And like, clearly, they know something. Like Activision, like Treyarch, Sledgehammer, and Infinity War, they know something that the rest of us don't. That's why no one else is making Call of Duty games right now, and if they are, they're not at the same level. No, I, I to be fair, I think if Call of Duty made a subpar game, and someone else made the same subpar game, Call of Duty would you know sell the same amount that they always do yeah. because it's fucking Call of Duty, you know. Yeah. Um, so I do think the franchise is worth a a, a lot, but mm-hmm. I mean. Sony's gotta take the L at some point. <laughs> like just, just take. I mean, Nintendo signed the ten year deal. Yeah, I mean, Sony Nintendo's... is playing hardball because they can't sign the ten year deal because that's admitting defeat. Yeah, I they mean... have they have to try this first. They have to because this will, if this is successful, it will break up the merger. Yeah, and so they have to do what they have to do. Yeah. Um. We'll see how this goes. We will continue to update you yeah. on the Microsoft <laughs> Sony uh, debacle. Stay tuned to the Wolfden Podcast. The only people talking about this. The only people talking about a uh, real court case, real law, re- yeah. re- real, real uh, history defining <laughs> law cases. This next news is the Trump scandal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Dissy Mac in the chat says, Hi, Bob. Big fan from YouTube and the Nintendo podcast. First time watching on Twitch using Amazon Prime sub. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. Love your content. It's pretty cringe for Sony to be crying <laughs> about COD. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, let's plow through the rest of this real quick. Okay. We've got a lot to talk about, but I do want to talk about the Ape Do thing. Yeah, Ape Do. Uh, have has added support for Apple devices. You no longer need to pass on Apitu's gamepads if you use Apple products. Apitu has confirmed that its controllers now officially support iPhones, iPads, and Macs thanks to both firmware updates and Apple's recent iOS 6.3, iPad OS 6. Uh, sorry, iOS 16.3, iPad OS 16.3, Apple TV OS 16.3, and Mac OS 13.2 updates. I I will say it worked on mac already yes uh, it did. i actually played on here before i updated it just to make sure i wasn't crazy right and this is not running 13.2 this is still running like 12 point something yeah um the compatibility is limited to the light se the pro the pro 2 the sn30 pro plus the sn30 pro oh, yes. for android and the ultimate controller 2.4 gigahertz 
but more models are incoming. The company's offerings are already some of um, Engadget's favorite mobile gaming controllers, and for good reason. They promise good ergonomics, substantial custom customization, and in some cases, a tinge of nostalgia. Uh, it's relatively easy to switch between your Apple devices and other hardware, more on that in a minute, um, such as consoles and PC. That makes them uh, particularly handy if you're playing action games away from home or just don't want to poke a touch screen. A lot of their older devices worked on Andrew, uh, worked on Apple. Yeah. Um, but I think that went away for a while. Yeah, because you had to get them made for iPhone certified at some point. Mm -hmm. And so people just stopped bothering uh, making their controllers compatible with iOS. I think once, once Apple started, once they created Apple Arcade and they allowed for um, Xbox and PlayStation controllers to work, on their devices and then eventually nintendo controllers they, it started opening up more and people started like making their controllers work for ios again this doesn't say ios this okay uh but <laughs> the original version of that did. did yeah yeah i remember yeah well because for the longest time like there was no good controller option for ios until finally my uh apples was like all right just use xbox controllers yeah <laughs> Um, well, now they say use PlayStation controllers. Yeah. You could buy PlayStation controllers at yes. the Apple store. If and you, I was there the other day, and I saw Apple TVs with DualSense controllers. If you go, because uh, I have an Apple TV, if you go to like you know pairing, and it's, it'll give you like how to pair uh, video game controllers, and it tells you on screen how to do it for Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. I, I paired the DualSense to this, and it worked very yeah. good. Uh, so I I did this last night with my um, with my SN30 Pro Two. Um, the up Upware software update software on Mac, or at least my version of Mac, broke. Uh, but it did update the firmware eventually. Um, but I had a lot of connection issues trying to get it connected to this and working with OpenEMU. I eventually got it working. Um, and I got it working on my phone. I okay. played. Not every game is compatible with a controller. I tried it with uh, Streets of Rage Two. It worked fine. Uh, Shovel Knight Dig is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's why I downloaded Call of Duty Mobile to try. I didn't try it yet, but so Call of Duty Mobile sucks. Uh, I think. Oh no, no, it should work with a wireless controller. Yeah. So I tried it on the stupid Razer Kishi thing. I mean, I like the Razer Kishi. I don't know why I called it stupid. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a controller that you put on the the phone. And this was on yeah. an Android phone, though. Right. Uh, and it won't recognize that controller. What you have to do is you have to take an Xbox controller. You got to pair the Xbox controller. Then you plug in the Razer Kishi, uh, and then you set it to the Xbox controller, and then you turn off the Xbox controller. You have to trick it into right, thinking right. it's using an Xbox controller. It's very stupid. So it might Call of Duty Mobile might be like that for. Yeah. for All right, I'll give it a shot later. Um, not noted in this article is that uh, currently only wired mode only works for iPad and uh, MacBook. So if you want to just plug a controller, and you can only okay. do it on iPad and macbook that right now but sense. that might change in a firmware update yeah um so that's cool that yes. that's cool that 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 all works yeah uh it's about time honestly yeah it's about time uh anyway what else do we got uh an early look at sonic 2006 back when it was sonic 2005 whoa I'll just skip to uh, what it actually is. The Tokyo Game Show footage painted a different picture of what Sonic 06 could have been. Uh, opening with an extended cinematic trailer, it then switches to gameplay of Sonic exploring bright and colorful 3D environments, collecting rings, and battling enemies. Sega co uh, Sonic co-creator Yuji Naka, who uh, was arrested last year for insider training, <laughs> presented the demo and told those attending the show that Sonic 06 would honor the 15th anniversary of so uh, Sega's mascot. Alas, it did not do that. Um, so yeah, it's just an early look at what, uh, Sonic 06 was originally supposed to look like. I mean, it doesn't look, wait, this beginning is frontiers. Is it not? <laughs> that's I mean, exactly the, 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 yeah, that's, the that's first, how the trailer, is. the yeah. first trailer for Sonic frontiers is literally this. Um, so yeah, it's not, I wouldn't say it's dramatically different, but it is different enough right. from what we got. I mean, not to say it would have. It's not to say it would have been better mm -hmm. or anything, but it's more dynamic looking. I guess you could call it. Yeah, I mean, this is just a, a like a like a cinematic so far. Yeah, I need I need actual gameplay. Oh, here it is. 
this looks the same. <laughs> this looks pretty much the same. Yeah. I still want to play this game. I still haven't played it. Like, it's all. it's only on 360 and PS3. So I have the 360 version. And you need a physical, right? You can't even like download it. You can. Oh, you can? Yeah, but again, it only on 360. It's it, only playable on a 360. It's not on Steam anymore? It was never on Steam. Mm. So... So next time we'll just bring over my copy of Sonic 06 for you. Okay. I have to hook up the 360. Yeah, so it's not backwards compatible. It's not backwards compatible. That that's just terrible. Well, oh. I they delisted it years ago because they're like, we don't want people buying this. Yuji Naka is legit playing it, I think. Yeah. Uh interesting. Uh there's also more Sonic news. Yes, Sonic Frontiers is getting an update. Uh coming tomorrow, uh at 5 p.m. Pacific and uh uh, or on Thursday, 1 a.m. Uh, CET. Is that? No, that's not. That's Central Time. No, Central Time is CT. It's coming tomorrow. It's coming tomorrow, <laughs> the update. Um, oh, get, yeah, 1 a.m. What the yeah. fuck is that? So the big, the big features are you, you're getting a photo mode. You can, t- you can make cool, that's cool. You make cool poses and images of Sonic. Central European time. Oh. There you go. For cool. you guys in Europe. Guys and gals in Europe. You got photo mode. You get challenge mode. Uh, after completing the main story campaign, challenge modes are instantly playable via the title screen. The new cyberspace challenge is a time attack mode where you'll complete seven stages from each of the islands while competing against the clock. Uh, also, Sonic Frontiers now offers Battle Rush, a timed battle mode where you can rapidly defeat multiple rounds of enemies, guardians, and titans in one go. Aim for the fastest clear time and you may get a special surprise. Uh, also, the jukebox. You can now uh, play different songs in Sonic Frontiers, uh, including uh, Crush 40's Live and Learn yeah! and Open Your Heart from Sonic Adventure 2 and 1, respectively. Um, Reach for the Stars from Sonic Colors Ultimate. Uh, I'm Here from Sonic Frontiers and many more. There are Is that a zebra heads? I think that was a zebra head song. No, uh, that's... Um, his world. Yes, yeah. yes. And then his world. world. His world. Um, there are 53 songs available, 13 of which are instantly unlocked and playable as soon as the game is updated. The remaining 40 is co- are, songs are collected by collecting sound memory icons on each island. So you have to actually hunt them down. Oh, that's annoying. Um, I just beat the game. I am not going to just go hunting down the songs. <laughs> I want to finish that game. So It, it is like... I know it's buggy. I know it's got its issues. I know the story is dog shit stupid, but I had so much fun playing. That's the, I really did. I kind of like that cringy shit though. Yeah, I, I'm kind of into that when it comes to '90s characters. Yeah, so I think I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll like it. I just, I thought it was a little bit of a drag to go, going around the open world. I see. I got into that because I, I like zend out and like just enjoyed like running around doing like the the weird you know floating platforming stuff yeah and stuff it was like relaxing and then doing the cyberspace like the classic sonic style levels like that was fun mm-hmm. to me i didn't necessarily like you know to progress the story i had to play ikaruga every so often or you know had to herd cattle at one point or did you play the pinball mini game yet no oh that sucks <laughs> that that straight up sucks so uh, but I think, you know, we've often said, like, Sonic Unleashed is a bad game because it's half a bad game, half a good game. This is a good game because it's more than half a good game. Okay, that's good to, that's yeah. reassuring. Yeah. Uh, 1995, Poppy, thank you for the five months. Kronkosaurus, thanks for the 22 months. And the Konami Man, thanks for the 10 months. Tell Wood to stop streaming during your podcast. No, you have to choose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Okay let's do let's open world donkey Kong game i'm intrigued about this information uh based on new information from nintendo prime in the latest episode of nintendo prime podcast nintendo has had a new 3d donkey Kong game in development for quite some time this project is said to have strangely been helmed by activision studio vicarious visions okay now i'm questioning it before (laughs) eventually moving in-house to be worked on at nintendo around 2017 or 2018 since that time nintendo has said to have been toiling away on the game at the studio since uh, at the studio that developed super mario odyssey 
That being said, many of these team members are making the game are said to have spun off from the Mario group to develop the title. When it comes to the specifics of this Donkey Kong game, the project was said to have been titled Donkey Kong Freedom at one point, but it's not known if this was ever the official title. Beyond this, this game supposedly takes place in an open world and would allow Donkey Kong to slide on trees to get to, uh, to get around, similar to Tarzan. Longtime Nintendo designer and director Shigeru Miyamoto is also claimed to have been heavily involved with the game. Nintendo Prime went on to say that the project is obviously still in development and added that it could be a launch title for the next Nintendo console. So that's about like all there is on this alleged. Where do you get the information? Uh, probably anonymous sources. <laughs> that's ridiculous. So Vicarious Visions? Is yeah. That is it? Who was owned by Activision and now it doesn't exist anymore because they're make they're a Blizzard support studio. Thanks for ruining Tony Hawk three and four remake, Bobby Kodak. Why? How would? How would they? That see that seems very strange that they would get the yeah. I mean Nintendo Nintendo has like worked with outside studios before, like on their internal stuff. Capcom mm-hmm. has made Zelda games. Sega made F Zero. Platinum made Star Fox. This could have been a pitch. It could have been a pitch, but like, why? Why would Activision? Activision clearly does not want to waste their time with Nintendo. Yeah, they're. Yeah, that does. This doesn't make any sense. That they're, they're they're that means that Activision would have a a hand in it, and that yeah. just doesn't make any sense for a well, first party Nintendo game. And why would Activision like just give Nintendo the stuff? That's very. That's a very. I mean, strange... then again, it is Activision, so if like it's not Call of Duty, they don't really care. I have to note this, that this was broken by uh, uh, Nintendo Prime. The only other YouTuber I have beef with publicly. <laughs> he's the guy that uh, kept asking me to be on his podcast. Oh, and I remember then, And then yeah. he said he'd kick my dog as like a joke. I and I just, that. so yeah. I, I went into dog dad mode and said, what yeah. the fuck you say about my, my, little, my little cute little guy? <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, this, this is this seems ridiculous. I, yeah. I, I there there needs to there be like some be pretty, pretty hard proof more for something like that. this. Uh. Anyway, uh, that I I mean I'm not. I think everybody is expecting a 3D Donkey Kong game. Yeah. Because of how hard Nintendo is pushing Donkey Kong IP in the movie and at the theme yeah. parks and stuff. Yeah. So it, um, that makes sense. Yeah. But the 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 developer is the yeah. biggest question mark. Uh, it's also been a while since we've gotten a Donkey Kong. I think Tropical Freeze was the last one. And that was a side scroller. Yeah. So we, we've only ever had like one full 3D Donkey Kong game. That was on the N64. Yeah. I think people are expecting something like Kirby. Yeah. Like, like, like Kirby's always been 2D. And then they did Forgotten Land. And it yeah. was phenomenal. So they could do that with Donkey yeah. Kong also. Uh, okay, let's talk about Vince McMahon. <laughs> uh, according to a report from Axios, Vince McMahon will be a playable character in WWE's upcoming video game, WWE 2K23. This news comes after the former CEO scandal-ridden retirement last year when the Wall oh Street Journal God. unearthed that the man paid four women $12 million in hush money over a period of 16 years, including a reported $3 million payout to a former employee with whom he allegedly had an affair with. According to Axios, McMahon's character can wrestle both male and female performers in a myriad of match types. Oh my god. Woof. Uh, While McMahon's appearance in WWE games isn't uncommon, it is particularly important to note that, in the past, EA Sports removed Manchester United and England striker Mason Greenwood from FIFA 22 uh, after his 2022 arrest on suspicion of rape, sexual assault, assault, and making threats to kill. This article is going in. Well, yeah. I mean, look who is writing it. Uh, not all ex WWE staff get to stay in the games. Axie has noted that wrestler Bray Wyatt was is in part of WWE 2K22's roster because of his departure from the company in 2021. Despite resuming employment uh, in, with WWE in October, Wyatt won't be playable in 2K23 until July as DLC. Uh, because games of this nature have a long production cycles, it's unclear whether or not McMahon's retirement and the recent allegations against him had any weight over whether or not he is, uh, he'd be a playable character. Very interesting. Yes. Uh, yeah, it is very interesting that because they've removed wrestlers from the game before. Yeah. Like when Hulk Hogan went through his whole thing many years ago, they took his ass out immediately. You have to now tell the guy who owns the whole franchise 
uh, hey man, you got a lot of controversy. You yeah. want to take you out of the game now? No one wants it's to be the even, guy to it's bring not that even up. That, like, it's a publicly traded company. Mm-hmm. So like technically he doesn't own it, but he is the majority shareholder. <laughs> and he used that to get himself back on the board of directors mm-hmm. <laughs> to try and se- sell the company, quote unquote. Yeah, I think that no one wants to tell him that it's a it's a yeah that it's a better idea if he just isn't a part of it. Yeah. So there you go. This this guy is seventy seven years old. Yes, he's he's looking, he's looking good for a seventy seven yeah. year old. I mean, his, his mind is deteriorated to nothing. Mind's but... deteriorated. I mean, he's got money, so that's why he looks the way he does. Yeah. Uh, so he also works out for like three hours a night every night. Yeah, starting at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right. Uh, I uh, well, I did the notifications. Uh, Zack Snyder. Yes, everybody's favorite director. His uh, his upcoming Netflix movie Rebel Moon is getting the game treatment. Snyder spoke to what? Nerd Queen's podcast along uh, this alongside word that he it was helping with the development of the game. Um, as for the type of game, Snyder said it will be an RPG, and apparently it will be have a ridiculous scale. One thing I'm having a really good time with, and I really and I don't really know if I'm supposed to talk about it, is this RPG that we're doing uh, that is just literally insane. And so immersive and so intense and so huge, he said on the podcast, according to BGC. What, what great adjectives. <laughs> Explains nothing about the yeah. game. Uh, there is more coming, uh, but I'll say that I'll say that it is. it was pitched to me because I've always wanted to do an RPG. Like, uh, well, we could, do it, we could do it at this scale or we could do it at a ridiculous scale. And I was like, ridiculous scale is clearly the scale that we should do it. All right, he's making a game. <laughs> you didn't really say anything about it. I think... He could make a great game. Okay. And he could, like, because his, his work is very video gamey already. True. Visually. True. I think his type of male power fantasy movie would translate very well into the realm of video games. Mm-hmm. I think if if done right, I mean, I, like, all he said is that they're making a video game on Rebel Moon. Mm-hmm. Um, which is based on a Star Wars pitch that was rejected, so he decided to make it himself with Netflix. Yeah, anyway, I was gonna say, what is this? What yeah. is what is it, the concept? Basically, it, literally, like he pitched the Star Wars movie to Disney, and they said thanks but no thanks. So he's like, all right, I'll do it myself with Netflix. So this is Zack Snyder's uh, legally distinct Star Wars. It kind of looks sick. Yeah, okay, it kind of looks pretty good. <laughs> um. So yeah, I th- I think I mean, again I don't know who's making this game. All he said was that they're making a game. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's a if it's a good studio and like you know with good shops and they have the time and resources to do it, I think I think we can have something yeah. pretty good. Yeah, here. if they make a good game, it'll be a good game. Yeah. But but he's I, he's not describing much. Yeah. About well, it here. What are you talking about? He says it's gonna have a ridiculous scale. It's gonna be immersive and insane and huge <laughs> and intense. Uh, Battlefield and Mirror's Edge is is going away. Goodbye. Um, as we close in on this is from EA. As we close in on 15 years since the release of Battlefield 1943 and Bad Company One and Two, we are announcing that their journeys are coming to an end. Starting April 28th of 2023, our grandmother's birthday. Uh, oh. Battlefield 1943, Battlefield Bad Company One and Two. Uh, will be removed from digital storefronts and you will no longer be able to purchase them. Uh, this is in preparation for the retirement of online services for these titles, which will happen on December 8th, 2023. Uh, for Bad Company 1 and 2, you can still continue to play them and use their respective offline features, such as a single player campaign. You can also read our FAQ and service updates for further information on the retirement of online services. While these titles hold a special place in our heart, uh, we are now looking forward to creating new memories alongside you as we shift focus towards our current and future Battlefield experiences. Uh, with this announcement, we want to take a moment to today to reflect on our time when Battlefield 1943 and Band Company 1 and 2. We share memories of not only their development, but also playing alongside you. Um, Which mirror is it? The first one. Okay, the good one. Yeah, why, why isn't this... That doesn't make any sense. Like, like I understand when I first heard this, I thought they were just shutting down the servers, and I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but they're the... delisting Mirror's Edge. See, I I thought I was going right to the source with this, but this says nothing. This yeah, is from EA. This is anything about Mirror's Edge. 
This is just about Bad Company 1 and 2 and... Uh, oh, wait. What's this? 1943. A previous version... This is from The Verge. A previous version of EA's press release said that Mirror's Edge was set to be delisted as well, but the company is now saying it has no plans to do that. So they're Oh! So they're back. So you had it I had, right. I had it right. But they went back on yeah. it. Interesting. So a tweet from Battlefield. An earlier version of this announcement included, included Mirror's Edge. That was an error. We currently have no plans to remove Mirror's Edge from digital storefronts. ADA so much. Okay, never mind. Everything's okay. Mirror's Edge is phenomenal. It is. Well, I like that game a lot. Yeah, that was a very good game. I mean, it still sucks that the two Battlefield games that like probably have the best single-player campaigns of the whole series and were yeah. actually unique uh, amongst the Battlefield games are going away. And 1943, which is like a really popular online shooter, is going away. So it's being delisted completely. Yes. That's ridiculous. And the, and the online servers are shutting down. The online servers shutting down, I understand. Right. The best thing to do if, 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 if you got to shut down online servers is allow for public servers like allow allow for people to make mm -hmm. their own custom servers. absolutely yeah uh but why you gotta delist the game i don't understand yeah. the the purpose of that i mean maybe you gotta read the maybe you gotta update them every once in a while but like should you ha like how, how how much often do you have to yeah yeah at a certain point like i don't really think it needs that much updating yeah like i mean the playstation 3 just got an update yeah like a week ago which is insane. Yeah. Does that mean they got to go in and update Battlefield Bad Company? Like, I guess. You know, someone's got to go in there with a the thumb drive and just upload the update. And just make sure it works. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I'd imagine it can't be that much work to keep a game just on a platform. Yeah. It's ridiculous. This is what we're talking about before. You know, games just disappearing. Yeah. And like EA said it right there. Like we're moving on to the next thing. But like what if people people want to play Bad Company? Like what if somebody is doing like research I want to play Sonic 06. I can't fucking play it. Yeah. What if somebody's doing research on the history of Battlefield and like they can't Or what if that was somebody's favorite Battlefield game and they don't have their 360 anymore and they want to play it now. True. Uh, so the last thing that I wanted to talk about was the Mets. How about it? Had I known you would, we were going to talk about this. I would have brought my Mets hat and switched. I forgot. Uh, the Mets tweeted, fired up the scoreboard for the first time. Did we do this right? And it is, uh, I guess their new scoreboard. Yeah. They're playing Mario Kart. There you go. In an egregious 16 by nine, <laughs> uh, stretched. Yeah. But I saw this and I said, Tell us what emulator you're using because there's no way your ass hooked up a whole N64. And turns out he knows the guy. Yeah, of course he does. <laughs> and he's a fun fact. The engineer, I know him and he used an N60, like a cheap N64 HDMI adapter. Yeah, that explains why it's stretched. Well, apparently this thing has 4x3. Okay. Uh, 4x3 conversion. Oh, oh no, I, I think it has to come in as yeah. four by three that i don't know uh but yeah that might explain why it's stretch but also like you want to show off the whole scoreboard so yeah. like you're gonna stretch yeah you make... probably needed that to make sure every pixel is working yeah the most kind of thing. people who are looking at the mets twitter account aren't gonna be like that's stretched you're, yeah. you're a noob yo what what interpolation are you using i th i my immediate thought was that's got to be an emulator because that can't be a switch because it's yeah. stretched i don't think you can stretch it on a switch no. Yeah, I don't think they have that option. You but, can play Goldeneye widescreen on Switch, though. Yeah, yeah, they, but they had to, yeah, unlock that. Um. Anyway, uh, that's it. Yeah, we did it. That's all of the news. Uh, I forgot a tweet of the week. Oh, maybe that was it. The that that could have that could have <laughs> been, been it. it. No, but that's not it. That's not a good tweet of the week. Um. Well, let me know because I got to do a live today. Apparently. Yeah. No. Well, I'll, well listen. I'll let you know. First, we we'll talk to you guys until I find a, yes. a, a, a oh, substantial tweet. I have to open week. up Discord so I can pull up comments left on last week's Wolfman podcast over on the YouTube channel, a YouTube.com slash Wolfman podcast. A YouTube.com slash Wolfman podcast. Okay, where are you? Where are you? Okay, here we go. Why are you showing me all these things now, Discord? I just wanna respond to people who left comments on last week's Wolfden podcast over on the, uh, the other day I did the thing where I can use discord on a PS5 uh-huh 
And you know how on Spotify, yes, if you're listening to Spotify, you can choose to use, like, instead of your phone, you can be like, play this on my Echo Dot. Yes. And you click it and it goes to the yeah. Echo. That's how Discord works on a PS5. You open up Discord on your phone or on your computer. Uh-huh. You get into a call and then you say, listen to this call on the PlayStation 5. And it okay. flings it to your PlayStation 5. So you don't actually do anything on the PlayStation 5. Interesting. Yeah. It was very, very right. strange. Uh... Wyden Gavin says there actually is GBA hardware inside the 3DS. The Ambassador games run it from that hardware. People with hacked 3DSs use a, pro- a program to inject ROMs into the virtual console or use open underscore AGB uh, underscore firm to utilize the hardware. MGBA is Garbo because it's software emulation. I don't think that's true. I think it... Uh, I got. I, I got. Be, I got to read that. There has to be some kind of Game Boy hardware in there, like GBA hardware in there, because it's based on DS technology, and DS technology has Game Boy. It's based on built. DS technology with that part removed. What? What did I just read? Because it. Hold on. Three DS virtual console. I, Wikipedia, which is the ultimate source for it. Um, these titles are running natively and are not emulated. They do not they do not support typical emulation features such as suspended play and restore points. Run natively. When I looked at it, because I because I was on a mission, because when right. I made the fucking hacked 3DS video. I was getting all that shit, and I was like, where are these people getting this from? It's not in there. They, they yeah. don't have that piece in there. It's... It must. Developments. Uh, now, now I have to find the source that, that, that led me astray. <laughs> Uh, the system contains a single core ARM 9 based processor enabling backwards compatibility with both DS and DSi games. Uh, EMMC flash memory manufactured by Toshiba or Samsung. All systems in the 3DS family use the same AC adapter as DSi and DSi XL. I will make a note and I will bring I will bring receipts next time and we will get to the bottom of this. Okay. <laughs> Nintendo does the GBA emulation running the 3DS in DS mode. Hmm. That is why the 3DS behaves the same way it does for those ambassador games as it does for DS games. This just threw a wrinkle on everything. I, I, I think I think running natively means it's running off of the 3DS hardware. I don't think it's running, but that would be emulation. Yeah. It has a DS, it has a chip in it for DS games. Right. A single car ARM 9 based processor for backwards compatibility. Uh, LJ says they're all ARM processors, so it makes sense that they could run it in emulated mode with little overhead. That's what I'm saying. I'm. I think that's just wrong. I'm. I'm all. I'm. I'm I and now I need a source though because I. I can't just yeah throw claims like that. But I'm almost positive that that part was removed, and now I need to fucking find the part and 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 get a fucking uh a, a circuit map of right. the goddamn 3ds. <laughs> Anyway, Ian Coop says you are a la- you are now a key part of my daily routine. Keep up the great work. Oh my god, thank you, oh. Ian Coop. Uh, you keep reading these. I want right. to. I want to look for a tweet of the week. Still, <laughs> steamed Devito thirty two. Uh, I'd love, I'd love one of the Retroid Pocket things, but man, I wouldn't even. Uh, I guess know which one to get, and with them coming out at this rate, I'd get massive FOMO constantly. Yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah. I mean, I totally get it. Like every time I get a new phone, like, oh, this is great. This will last me forever. And then the next one comes out. I'm like, oh, do I want that? 
I honestly think that the Steam Deck is the best emulation device, device yeah. to get because it's e you have to do a little work to get the emulators on there, but it is very easy and it has the most versatility, the most usability, and you're not going to get FOMO when a new one comes yeah. out. Um, uh, Gamer CF97, I'm with you on emulation. Only recently got into it, but only to play games I can't access anymore. Recently been playing Simpsons Hit and Run on the Steam Deck. There you go. Gotta say, it's been a pretty slow twi Twitter week, but uh, we have a Tweet of the Week. Tweet of the Week! Tweet of the Week! Tweet of the Week! That was pretty good. Tweet of the Week! Tweet of the Week! Tweet of the Week! I had to do both. I had to do both. Yeah. Uh, this is from Bitch Stewie. <laughs> it says, can you watch him while I go smoke? And it's a chain shot. God bless. Thank you. My allergies have been disaster recently uh it's friggin spring baby yeah it's happening uh okay uh more last week's uh World gamer Street. cf i read said, that okay joel shore uh says uh some other stuff bob checked out on early he stopped watching Star Wars when they left Tatooine because the movie was about hiring a ship. <laughs> no! The movie starts off with the fucking dro uh, droids and fucking Darth Vader and, and Princess Leia. It sets the scene immediately. It sets the goal immediately. He stopped watching Ocean's Eleven when they hired the gymnast because the movie was about getting a heist gang together. I don't know anything about Ocean's Eleven. He stopped watching Avengers pretty quickly because the movie was about Black Widow getting Bruce to join the team. <laughs> I don't remember anything about how Avengers started. What were we talking about when you stopped playing? I was talking about how animes do a really annoying oh, thing where, yeah. they, where they, they set a goal for the series and then they accomplish the goal very quickly and they don't set up a new goal. They, they they just end the episode and then you have to watch the next episode to see what the new goal is. I think what they're trying to say is like, you know, these movies, like they have an overarching goal, but there are little mini goals in between. So like, yeah, in Avengers, Black Widow's goal was to recruit Bruce Banner, but then the next goal was to bring him into the team and acclimate him to everyone else. And then the next goal after that was trying to figure out what Loki wants. And then the goal after that was he's making a joke about how yeah, I how don't like it. <laughs> I don't like when they <laughs> do that, but I'm sure that they do that in movies and it's fine in some movies, but also yeah. it's a fucking movie and you're there for the hour 30 or whatever. Yeah. In a show, the episode ends, then you're like, gotta wait till next week. It's like a perfect time to stop and leave and just give up on the yeah. whole show. They don't give you a reason to start the next one. Right. And that's what happened with Andor. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, that fucking happened with Andor. They, the whole thing was about the heist. Yeah. They did the heist, and then the episode ended, and I was like, that was a perfect ending. <laughs> and I stopped watching. Did you at least see the jail stuff? The I, actually I, good I actually, stuff of the season? I actually got to when he got put in jail. Yeah. So I did watch one episode more, and I'm glad that I did. I do want to finish it, but yeah. I haven't yet. Did you start watching Mandalorian? No. no yeah. I haven't watched Mandalorian. I haven't finished The Last of Us. Because Mandalorian, like... See episode three, not to get into that. I don't know understand what's with the Jean Favreau of Dave Filoni run Star Wars shows, but they just like to just hijack the season to do something that has nothing to do with what's going on yeah. in the main plot. And we are three episodes into the Mandalorian right now. <laughs> That's why I haven't finished The Last of Us, because uh I know that the next episode is uh left behind. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I don't I just Maybe I'll skip it. Maybe yeah. I just won't watch that episode. Uh, L now we're in the chat yes. for two seconds because we're running late. Uh, LJ says, uh, he copy and pasted from Wikipedia. Unlike other virtual console branded releases, Game Boy Advance games are not emulated, but rather they run directly on an ARM 7 TDMI processor core. The AGB firm kernel running on the other CPUs is responsible for emulating the game pack playing a fil a video filter and allowing the brightness to be adjusted or the game quit without manually rebooting the, the Jesus Christ the 3DS so the physical hardware 
is the ARM 7 TDMI processor core. And the firmware is the AGB firmware. Mm -hmm. AGB, I don't know what that means. Um, Advanced Game Boy. That's a good point. <laughs> that's probably what it is. Uh, what ARM chip did he say? A ARM 7 TDMI. That is, that's on a DS. That was the processor, uh, uh, Process sound output, Wi-Fi support, and takes on second processor duties in the Game Boy Advance mode. Oh, in the Game Boy Advance mode. Yes. S sound and video? Yeah. Uh, sound output, Wi-Fi support, and secondary processor duties in Game Boy Advance mode. Okay. I think there's more Game Boy Advance stuff that the DS has than just that. Well, that, I mean, that's what the, that's what it says that processor does. For the DS. Right. The 3DS, I don't think, has that processor, um, but it has multiple processors. Oh. But, wait. In response to August 2011 price drop on the 3DS hardware, Nintendo announced plans to give early adopters of this system a number of virtual console releases. Oh, this is about... Um, the 3DS ambassador program. Game. Yeah. Ultimate GBA v VC injector for 3DS. Okay. I don't want to make this just us reading shit. Yeah. <laughs> GBA VC is run by AGB firm. ROM FS isn't used for gba virtual console titles but can be found empty within virtual console titles okay so what does that mean exactly all values in the gba virtual console footer and related structures are little i just i need a fucking i just need to find the goddamn a uh, circuit map of a goddamn 3ds and a and a and a ds yeah and go like this and see what's up that's what i need to do uh lj says in other words they use custom gba firmware to run gba games on the 3ds using the 3ds processor oh using the 3ds processor yes so it's firmware it's gba firmware. that's not the same as as hardware <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what i'm trying to say that's the fucking thing i'm trying to say uh Tetsuyomi is saying he's, they're going to open up their DS. I I can find a map yeah. pretty, pretty pretty easily. So, all right, well, let's uh, answer a couple more questions yeah. to get the fuck out of uh, here. I, next week I will have a definitive answer on this okay. because because I'm getting fucking pissed off. Uh, Mori Mocha, hey Bob, if you want to play Sonic 06, you should try PO6. It's a PC recreation of the original game. It's really cool, and I think the Sonic and Shadow campaigns are finished. I've heard of this. It's like a fan recreation of trying to like make Sonic 06 but good. You should play just the original. Like. Yeah, that's the pro. Like I'm, sh I'm, I, I appreciate that. That's a thing. I want to experience Sonic 06 the way uh, Sega intended. Yeah. Because I want to, I want to see what happened. You know, <laughs> it's it's not pretty. I tell you yeah. that. Yeah. All right. Um, hey, Bob, if you wanted... To, oh, you read that. Yeah. Did you know you can emulate using RetroArg on Xbox Series S and X? Yes, I have a video on it, actually. It can be installed through apps on Microsoft App Store. Uh, that I have... That's a different method that I did not do. It emulates PS2 and GameCube really well, as well as many others. If it is not against Microsoft Terms of Service to emulate, so they won't ban you for it. I have a video where I use the developer mode to do it. Yeah. Um, uh, but there is a new method that I think is what you're referring to. Did you see Modern Vintage Gamer had a video? You know how Xbox says if you want to play Xbox Series games off of external storage, you need to use one of their $200 memory cards? Yeah. Apparently, some games can play off of a regular external hard drive or SSD uh a usb ssd and run in series x mode 
So like full featured and everything. Interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Not all of them, but like some of them can do that. You remember how back in the day with the Xbox 360, we used to just take enclosures for the hard drives? Yeah. Rip them open and put different hard drives in them mm -hmm. to make them bigger yeah. instead of buying the proprietary ones. Yeah. You can do that on uh, the new consoles, but the uh, M.2 drives, the small ones, yeah. are so prohibitively expensive that it's almost cheaper to just buy the, the licensed ones. Not anymore. Since what? Um, uh, fucking two months ago. Like very, re like very recently, M.2. But the ones you get for the PS5, anyway, you can get. You can no. find like a. These are small. These oh, are the, the small, small ones. ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I didn't know about the small ones. No, the small ones are all made by like off-brand companies. And yeah. Shit. The big ones are pretty. Are, that those have yeah. gone down in price pretty. pretty I, I've good. seen people try to sell like the shells of the Xbox memory cards on uh, Amazon and stuff. And like you can put any small uh, NVMe drive in there and it'll work. But Microsoft has a security chip oh. that with like custom firmware on it that like has to be paired with an actual Xbox. Because because I've seen on uh, on Amazon you can just buy the enclosures. Yeah, no, the the enclosures don't work because they have to come with a security chip. I didn't know that part. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on Twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we we'll always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast, so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on whatever podcast service you choose Apple Podcasts, Spotify for Podcasts, Google Play. What have you. No matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us a placement on all those respective platforms. Uh, go say hello to Jackson. Everybody go into his chat and say nice shirt because he's wearing a wolf den shirt. Uh, I, will, I might stream tomorrow uh, because I'm going away this weekend. I'm going to PAX. Going to Boston. Doing a signing at the Screenway booth on Friday at 12 noon. I probably should have... No, I think... Is it 12 or 1? Shit. <laughs> 12 or 1. Just be at the... Yeah, I don't actually... Wait. <laughs> I should figure this out. Go to, the, go to the booth. It is 1. No. It is 12. Go to the it booth It is 12. At, go to the booth at 11. <laughs> it's 12 Get noon. Get there early. I'll see you there. Goodbye. Bye. Is this the button? It is the button. Hey, you got it right.